Hello friends, I am Nidhi Jain. I am a science teacher at VK Patel Memorial School, Pune. And today I will be discussing with you all how I conducted hands-on activities for the topic reflection of light in my class. Like demonstrating the rectilinear path of light, demonstrating the principles of reflection of light, observing the reflection of light on regular and irregular surfaces, explaining the laws of reflection. Let's begin. So I thought the best way was to hand out few mirrors to my students and let them figure out the effects of reflection. I asked students what did they observe? Do the objects in the mirror image have the same brightness? Were the objects of the same size? This discussion was also a further revision of their understanding of behavior of light. Next, I thought I would revise the phenomena of rectilinear propagation of light with a demonstration. For this, you need a duster, some chalk or talcum powder and a laser. Rub chalk on a duster and collect lots of powder to visualize the light path. It is advised to conduct this activity in the dark. Shine the laser on the wall. Tap the duster to visualize the small particles along the path of the laser light. A point of precaution, make sure the laser is pointed towards the wall and not towards your students. After this activity, my class had a discussion on the path of light beam. I asked them few questions. Why do they observe dust particles in the laser light? What will happen if they use torch instead of laser pointer? What if we do not use chalk powder? Next, I ask the question to the students. You have seen reflection of light in the first activity. During the class discussions, students wondered if the path of light is rectilinear even after reflection. To answer this question, I demonstrated the next activity. For this, we need a laser and a plane mirror. Place the mirror and pass the laser beam on it. The mirror will reflect the beam. Observe the reflected light beam. With this, we could confirm that reflected light also travels in a straight line. I asked a question. What if I point the laser towards my table? Will they be able to see the same reflection? In addition to plane mirror, other objects of various shapes also reflect light. I pointed out that some of these are irregular reflection as opposed to regular reflection given by plane mirror. We will understand their properties in the next activity. For this, we need crumpled aluminum foil, old CD and a plane mirror. Take a small piece of aluminum foil and crumpled it. Place on the table and project the laser beam on it. Observe the reflection coming through the crumpled aluminium piece. Now take a plane mirror or acrylic mirror and observe the reflection by it. Now do the same process with the old CD or DVD and observe the reflection. I asked my students to note down their observations about the reflected ray in each of the three cases. I defined the terms incident ray, reflected ray and the normal. We discussed their observations, specifically the angle of the reflected ray made with the normal and the intensity of the reflected ray. I guided my students to draw the ray diagram and observe the path of light in each of these cases. We discussed the differences and I posed a question. Are these reflections governed by the same physical laws? To answer this, I demonstrated the next activity. For this, we need a printout of protector, a plane mirror and a laser. Stick the printout of the protector on the foam sheet with glue and stick the plane mirror on the edge of the foam sheet. Now the laser beam falls on the mirror. You can observe the path of light. Measure the reflected angle by changing the incident angle. I asked them to note their observations in this worksheet. At this point, I introduced the terms angle of incidence and angle of reflection. 
I noticed that students often confuses these terms with the ray of incidence and ray of reflection. After this activity, we can ask following questions on angle of incidence and angle of reflection like, what is the angle at which incident ray, reflected ray will coincide and what is this line called? Is it possible that incident ray and reflected ray are on the same side of normal? In the first activity, the laser beam is perpendicular to the plane of board. What if it falls on the board at an angle? Then I introduced the laws of reflection. The incident ray, reflected ray and the normal, all of them lie on the same plane. Angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. You can find activities for reflection of light on curved surfaces, multiple reflections and a simple setup to revise all the concepts in the lesson plan linked in the description box below. Teaching using these activities is definitely going to help students understand the concept and retain it better. Discussions using their observation to figure out rules of physics is going to enlighten their minds. We can definitely teach these topics and draw the ray diagrams and provide them with laws and definition and finish this topic in an hour. Or we take two, three hours and show them bunch of cool phenomena and let students think for themselves. Which do you think is better? The activities described in this video are cost effective. Hope your students find these activities illuminating. Thanks for watching.